You good boys? Who's my good boys? Is that my <laughs> Oh, of course. <laughs> mm. uh, I'll find it and I'll link it. Tinkers, no. Luther just told him to shut up. Welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish if we haven't met and if we have met, welcome back. It's Monday and if you know me and you've been around for a while, you know that means there's sheets in the dryer. I have found with housekeeping, if I don't make things into a habit, then they never get done. <laughs> So Monday's my habit, wash the sheets, about to run the vacuum, and mop the studio. Is my mop? Yeah, my mop's right there. Of course, two minutes in, I had to change the battery. I have not been spinning a ton, but I have been very, very busy. I've been dyeing more stuff, putting it in the shop. I put a ton of dish towels in the shop, and last night I finished the weaving on the Christmas set of dish towels that I thought I would have done but then I went to my mom's for a visit to her and did not get them done. And when I came back, I was like, now I can't have them done in time for Christmas. And I just kind of ignored them. I had a lot to catch up on, you know how it is. So I haven't been spinning a ton lately and I did just get an electric eel wheel. I decided I've been looking at this top from Paradise Fibers. It came in one of the monthly packages and I think it was August, but don't quote me. Um, I'll find it and I'll link it. When I opened this, some of you guys have seen it. When I opened it, I said, this is the perfect opportunity to do what I think of as like a type of color in spinning study. So my goal, what I wanna do with this is spin, it's eight ounces. I should have said that earlier. I What I wanna do with this eight ounces is split it into eight. So eight one ounce approximately little sections and do eight different things that you can do with the plying and the colors because I feel like a lot of us fall into the habit of doing things a certain way because we like it and also because we aren't really sure what the outcome is going to be if we try and change different things and something with the like very um defined color changes is going to be a good thing to actually see how it works if that makes sense so this is perfect i'm about to split it into eight we are going to divide this okay eight ounces is going to be a long i don't know strand isn't the right word So this is gonna this video is gonna be in more than one part because eight is just way too many. My hope is four and four, but it may be two, two, and two. Um and I'm gonna do some things splitting it. I actually made myself a list, you know. How did I lose it? How did I lose the end? There it is. Okay. I actually made a list. You know what? Let me get the list. Hang on. Okay, so here's my list of the eight different ways we're gonna handle this color. By the way, this is merino, but it's like a higher micron merino. I don't remember, but again, I think it's in that video. All right, so I'm only gonna tell you the first four. The first four are singles and then split singles. So what I'm gonna do is a single that is spun directly off the end, just without changing it at all. And then I'm gonna split it in half or thirds, I haven't decided, probably in thirds, because that'll be more easy to see the difference and do singles right off, like one after another after another. I am gonna knit samples. I think I'm gonna crochet samples too. I do know how to crochet, spoiler. Those are the first two. Let's get all the way to the middle. And for today, I am just gonna split off the first two, sorry, the first four sections. So I'm just going to the center, break it. I'm totally making a mess on my table as usual. So I'm gonna wind one of these up just to get it 
out of the way because four ounces of this is enough to wrangle around, let alone, there we go, eight whole ounces. So I'm just gonna set this aside for the next four. So now this is just half and I'm gonna do the same thing again. Go to the center and break it. And then I'm gonna do half of each of these again. So I'll have four little sections. That's going to be plenty to tell how this works. So here are our first four little balls and the first two we are going to do straight up singles which will be hopefully pretty quick so I'm ready to go start spinning. I think I have projects on like X number of different wheels. I did finish, well I'll show you that in a finished video. I did finish the BFL uh, from the January Paradise box and then I finished the purple singles that I dyed ages ago. Probably almost like 10 months ago I dyed them for a sweater. I finished the singles. I'm ready to start plying but I've just been doing other stuff and so I could spin it on my matchless or on I'm gonna spin it on the eel because that's the new wheel. It'll be a good time for me to be testing and seeing how I really like it. I maybe I can give a full real review after this. You know, all I really did was a first impression the first time because people were saying great review. It really wasn't. There is still stuff for me to find out as I spin on it. So We're done with the singles. I'm actually gonna take off this bobbin and show it to you. Okay, we're in different light. I just wanted to quickly show you guys what this single looks like. It's so pretty. Um, I'm gonna wind it into a two yard hank and get it washed. I do not expect it to be balanced when I take it off. That would be actually weird because it's only spun one way. So singles, you know, just, it doesn't work like that. So let's take it off. That's normal for singles. This is so pretty. I'm gonna soak both of the singles yarns in hotter water and fold them a little bit, which means just like beat them around so they kind of felt a little. I will not be doing that with probably any of the others. We'll see how they go, but I just because that will help singles hold together a little bit more. On to the next one. But next, what we're gonna do is shorten the color changes for the next singles yarn. And that is going, when I knit and crochet it up, you're gonna be able to see what a difference that makes in how your finished yarn looks. So I think I'm gonna try and split this into three. Well, I'm gonna go for three, three different sections. Okay. All right, so there's one. And then I'm gonna take this and split it into two. Gosh, it split itself. Okay, so when I was doing that, and it happens sometimes, this little section actually split itself into two. So what I'm gonna do is let those be separate and change up the thicknesses. And then the same thing happened with part of this one. Is it part of it or is it all of it? No, it's all of it. The whole thing, see it split itself basically. So I'm going to let those splits happen. They happen naturally in the top. And I just caught this one, hang on. 
so this is I'm, and I'm just gonna pick one piece at a time and spin it so the color repeat is gonna be much much shorter because I just don't have as much orange to spin before I move on to the yellow and um, the same with the whole thing going through so we're gonna do these singles and then we'll come back and I'm gonna go ahead and wash those two and go through the whole process Okay, so um, the only difference really between these two is that this one sat on the bobbin longer before I wound it into a hank. So I think that's probably why you're seeing less like bounce back on it. It isn't, it was spun on the exact same speed crazy enough. So, I mean, I've talked about that before. If it sits on your bobbin, some of the, uh, some of the twist is just going to set just from sitting there a long time. This is the first one, the one that was not split spun directly off the top. And then this one, they really do look pretty similar, right? I feel like I should mention this. So a lot of people don't know that sometimes using hot water, on acid dyed wool can make the dye release and this is not bleeding at all so that's a great thing but it is something important to know if you are planning on fulling with hot water or or washing in hot so you can full some yarn i'm gonna finish filling up the sink and then i'm gonna beat it around and like kind of fluff it around in there a little and hang it up to dry are you okay <laughs> all right so we are <laughs> getting ready to spin on day two and we are gonna do two three plies we are going to do <laughs> we're going to first spin one long single right off the end of the roving and then chain ply it and we will test what that looks like who's ready let's get spinning my buddies are here so this is one more ounce I just randomly grabbed one Okay, we're gonna put this on my Shocked Lazy Kate. It's my favorite. And ply it. I'm gonna show it to you on the bobbin and then I'll go hang it up. In love, it's so good. And this is a little reality check for me and for the world. 
this is what my work table looks like when I'm trying to wind a hank because I have so many things going. I'll clean it off and the next day it looks like this again. <laughs> We pretty much got the same colors. I'm going to show it to you up against the singles. But when we knit or crochet or weave, we're going to get a different color situation. And we're also going to get a different behavior because this is plied. So I'm going to show you. All these colors are pretty similar. So you aren't truly changing the colors that much, although you would if you spun it from the fold. All right, we're on the last one. I thought about this quite a bit because I want to make the study part of this make the most sense. So I think what I'm actually going to do, I'm still going to do the same eight different combos or types of ways to do this, but I am going to change up the order. I'm going to split this one the way I split the second spin which I used for singles and do the exact same thing that I just did as far as the spinning. So I'm gonna split this one, I'm gonna spin finer singles and then I'm gonna go ahead and chain ply it and we can compare what it looks like with the full length of the repeat and a much smaller length of the repeat from the split. Again, if it, lets it, if it splits itself, I'm gonna let it do that. Also, I just saw the trailer for Boogeyman and it scared me. <laughs> and I'm hard to scare, really hard to scare. So, hey, anybody else waiting for that movie? Okay, I'm gonna let this go in three, three sections, that's perfect. And you saw how that this one kind of split itself at the end, so I just went with that natural split. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin these singles, let's go, and then we'll ply it in the chain ply method that I used last time, and we'll be able to compare on the knitted swatch what it looks like. I am gonna chain ply it uh, just like the last one. The plying technique is the same. I'm going to shoot that from a different angle though because I have noticed over the years that people tell me they learned new things when they saw things from different angles. So I'm going to film the chain plying from a different angle. This is the first single spun straight off the roving or the top, sorry, without even splitting anything, just directly off that top. This is the single spun from the split top that was divided lengthwise. This is the chain ply yarn spun straight off the top without any splitting or dividing. Isn't that gorgeous? I can hardly stand it. This is the chain ply that was split. So the color repeats should be much shorter. They are definitely much shorter. We got more blending. I mean, if you look at these next to each other, you can see a difference in the hank and that is not always the case. Sometimes they look similar in the hank because the color distribution is pretty equal but um, you can really see the difference between these two. Let's see if you can see. Um, I guess you can see a difference, but it is not as pronounced in the singles. So now I'm gonna wind these one at a time. I'm gonna knit a good size swatch. I'm gonna crochet a good size swatch from each one and we'll compare them and then we'll go on to the next four for next week. We're gonna go through these. I have some interesting observations, of course, being me. 
We're gonna start in order. So this is the single ply spun right off the spun right off the top and then felt it a little bit in the or fold a little bit in washing. This is crocheted. It is double crochet all the way every row. And then this is the knitted one and the colors are actually darker than they're looking on my screen. I hope they come through better when I'm editing. Here's the leftover yarn. I had a hundred and I think 10, 110 yards on this one. One of the things I think is interesting, this is also a single, but the, the top was split lengthwise a bunch of times. It ended up being five times. I was only two yards different on the singles, which is a little crazy. Um, here is the leftover yarn. I guess I should do it in order, right? So here is the crocheted sample. Here is the knit sample. And here is the leftover yarn, only two yards different. And I'm gonna actually pull back so you can see those two next to each other. You can just really easily see the color change is happening much more quickly in the split one. This is the chain plied one, the first chain plied one that was spun straight off the end of the top without any splitting. And you can see, here's the crocheted one, and then here is the single spun right off the end of the top. The, the I'm gonna cr cover this. The length of the stripes and the color repeat is very similar, and it does make sense if you think about it because there's no splitting. And when you ply this on itself, you're actually gonna get a similar length as you would when you do a single that's much thicker than the single of this. I don't know so much. These topics are so huge, they're hard to talk about. But you can see that this knitted sample also, color repeat wise, is very similar to the single. I did spin the single much thicker then this single was, but then when you ply it, you end up with something very similar in length. Um, I had only 96 yards for this one, but that's partly because this yarn is more dense. And I can say that even though the color repeat is very similar and this is more work, I liked knitting with it and I like like the fabric I got and the way it feels much better. So I would definitely, for me, go with this, but we all have our own preferences and that's fine. Here is the chain plied, but it was split and I believe I split it into three sections. So this one was five sections. You're gonna get a shorter color repeat, of course, than this. And I have to say, I really, again, liked this yarn much better. Um, I just really, it's springy and squishy and nice and round and it just knits so beautifully, crochets so beautifully as well. And here is the knit swatch. And again, you can see the split ones, even though this is a single and this is a chain ply, look very similar color repeat wise. I definitely learned some stuff from this. The way these colors blended were a surprise to me and I'm excited to finish this up. So next week we will do the other four samples, four completely different preps. We'll see how much different they look. We'll see how much they look the same. I'm excited to get this done and I really appreciate you guys along for the ride with me. I will see you soon. Thanks, I love you, bye.